Hello and welcome back to OpenLCA Tutorials. This week we're going to take it back to the basics. We're going to look at how to create flows, processes, product systems, and projects. Next week we'll be looking, we'll start to look at something a bit more complicated. I will be putting up a new case study next week online. I will put the links in the description box below once that happens. And starting next week we will go through the case study in videos. I'll probably split it up into two or three videos. But that should be an interesting project, so keep your eye out for that. But for now, we're going to look at flows. So what is a flow? Um, they represent the flow of products and materials within your model. So this is the first level we start on. If you want to create a new flow, give it a, a right click and hit new flow. Um, let's make an example for this video. Let's say we can start looking at the production of water bottles because that's the case study that we'll look at next week. So let's say we want to produce a water bottle. So the flow, let's say, is bottle. That's our product. And the reference flow property is going to be number of items. We want to look at the number of bottles that we produce. So let's click finish on that. And here's the flow we just created. Now, if you want to produce or modify materials and products, you need processes. So let's create a new process. And let's say this is the process model production. Now, we don't need to create a new product flow for the process because that's what we did in the previous step. Had we not done that, we, did, we could have created a new flow here and um, it would have been given the name bottle production. So, but here we can say our flow is bottle, finish, and here's the process. Okay, now let's put some content into this bottle. So how do we produce a bottle? Well, we need some, maybe we need a transport process. So let's say transport transportation, non-transportation, Great transportation. Okay, plastic production in Germany or in Europe. We need some electricity. So let's look for low voltage. Ah, that's Well, let's say Denmark, okay? And we need the plastic. So, auto grade plastic granulate production. Okay, that's enough for now. Um, now we'll take a step back. Last week, I talked about the new EcoInvent databases that have been put online. They've been updated so that system processes and unit processes can be compiled in one database in OpenLCA. And here's the database that I made last week. So this is the EcoInvent allocation default. And here I've got the system processes and unit processes. So when I pick out, pick out this process or this flow, then I can select in my default provider whether I want the system process or unit. So in this example I want to look at unit processes so I can go through and then select unit for each example. There we go. Okay, um, like I talked about in the parameters video, you can use parameters to set the amounts for different items you've got going. Let's say our transportation is always going to be actually let's set the parameters first. Let's say we have three different parameters or four in this case. You've got the weight of the plastic you're using, you've got the distance that it's being traveled, and the electricity you're using to produce it. I'm just going to leave the values at one. I can change them later. Um, so here you've got 10 kil kilometers. Let's change that to kilograms. 
So let's say we've got our weight times our distance. In here you want the num amount of electricity. Let's change that to kilowatt hours, for example. Um, there we put our parameter E. And the mass of the plastic is going to be W. So I can change these parameters that I set here on either this level or on the project uh, project level or product system level, depending on what I want to calculate. So let's save this process for now. And in order to calculate this process, I need to create a product system. Because a product system is basically the network of processes. Now there's two ways to do that. Either you can go to the General Information tab and click on the Create Product System button, or you can go over here to the navigation window, right click New Product System, and do it that way. So let's just create it right out of this process. So here's the name. Our reference process is the one we just created. I'm not going to connect processes because I want to show you something. So let's click finish here. So here's our product system. So since I didn't connect any of the processes, you can see them here without any, any providers. So to find the providers for these processes, if I didn't do that, I would get values of zero when I did calculation. But let's search for the providers. Here's the electricity. And then here I also have the option to select between system and unit processes. So let's add and connect the unit processes and then repeat that for our other two components. So for the plastic, um, transport. Okay, so now we have all of our processes connected. So let's save that. And on this level, you could even just calculate right now. Let's say we have we had have our parameters, our three par parameters. Let's say now I know how many kilometers I want to travel. Let's say we're going 1,000 kilometers. We need, I don't know, 200 kilowatt hours to produce a bottle, and every bottle has 60 grams of plastic. So that's just theoretic. Let's save that again, and you can click on the calculate button, and you will get the results based on the parameters that you set on this level. Another way that you can calculate product systems or compare product systems is by using a project. And a project is basically just that, a comparison of project systems. So to create a project, right click on the project icon, create a new project. We want to compare bottle production. Finish. Okay, so this is the product project editor. So you can create when your impact assessment method for your calculation. Whether you're going to be using normalization and weighting, you can select which impact categories you'd like to look at. Let's say we want to look at acidification, eutrophication, human toxicity, and ozone layer depletion. So I will deselect all of the other categories. And here, in the variance fields, you can basically add the different scenarios that you'd like to look at. So now we want to look at the product system that we have in scenario one, and you can rename them if you want. For example, like that. Let's see, we can compare that to the same product system. Okay, so you can compare the amount of items that you would like to look at. Let's say I want to see what the difference is when I produce a million bottles opposed to when I produce a thousand. Then you would click on the report, report button and you get the results, the impact assessment results as well as the inventory results. But you can also use the parameters that you set on the process level to make comparisons. So let's select the parameters that we have. Okay, 
let's say in scenario one, we have a thousand kilometers, and in scenario two, I have, I have to transport uh, 5,000 kilometers. So let's select 1,000 so that it's a fair comparison. We have 1,000 items that are being tra transported, either 1,000 kilometers or 5,000 kilometers. So save that. And then to see the calculation, click on Report. So here you can see the single indicator results. So you have the um, the results whether you in this case this is scenario two we're traveling per, or the the components are being transported 5,000 kilometers opposed to been when being transported 1,000 kilometers. So you can select the different categories, the impact categories that you chose to look at, and see the comparison. You can also look at the results relative to one another. So the, the result that has the highest would be given a percentage of 100, and the other scenario is displayed as a percentage of the maximum. So in this case, you can see that transporting 5,000 kilometers obviously makes a huge difference in the amount of impact for those categories. Yeah, we'll get into the functionality of projects and product systems and get into more detail how to use parameters in a simple but more complicated example than this. Next week we will start with that, so I'm looking forward to that. As usual, I will put information in the description box below if you have any comments or questions or would like to get a hold of me. Then feel free to write a comment below or write me an email directly. Thanks a lot and see you next week.